Real Science, Biblical Truth Central. Um, I got this feeling in my spirit the other day, and I decided that, you know, while it's on my mind once again today, I'm going to just go ahead and get on camera and put this message out there because in these last days, we don't need to be taking no chances. We need to be as obedient as possible. And true believers in Christ know exactly when the Lord is speaking to them. Remember, the Bible says that God is spirit. And to worship him, we must do so in spirit and in truth. Amen. Don't look for an audible voice. He speaks to the spirit loud and clear. And he wants us to be obedient. He wants us to relay these messages over to the saints and out into the world as well. And in this message, I'm in the book of Jonah. And I was driving in my car a couple of days ago. And I was just thinking about Jonah. Jonah's only about four chapters. Very, very short book. But it's a, it's a powerful book that puts things in perspective of the saints. Of those that the Lord considers to be righteous. It put things in perspective from an individual such as Jonah who knows the truth, who knows the Lord, and he wants to keep that to himself. And he didn't want to go out to where there are wicked people who are doing ungodly works and who are doing ungodly things. If you've read the book of Jonah, I'm not going to read the whole book, but I'm just going to sum, I'm going to give you a summary, a short summary of the book. You know, most of you all probably know Jonah and the whale and so on and so forth. But you got to remember that the reason that uh, Jonah ended up in the, the belly of the whale is because he was being disobedient to the, to the Lord. I mean, I'll read um, verse 2 out of chapter 1. It says, God's telling Jonah, arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it for their wickedness has come up before me. Um, God told Jonah, he gave him a specific order to go to Nineveh. And you warn those people that I see what's going on. You warn those people that their evil works and their wickedness is about to be judged. I need you to go and to tell them what is coming issue a warning to them remember god is good he's not gonna just drop the hammer on us he always gives us warning after warning after warning after warning before he you know hits judgment on us you know god god is good he's good all the time you can never say that he doesn't give us chances you got people out here who are upset who are crying who, who don't know understand why things are going on right now because they're blind and they're too deep in their sin to see, you know, what's going on. And as you know, because Jonah disobeyed God, he ended up in the belly of the well. And then he finally goes to Nineveh and he preaches to them. And we have to understand the people of Nineveh were very wicked, very evil people. But in the end, a lot of people did end up getting saved. Some people didn't want to hear. Some people did hear. And that is the point of this message right here. How many of you out there are in the position of Jonah to where the Lord is instructing you to preach the gospel, to where the Lord is instructing you to share the truth of the Bible, to where the Lord is giving you instructions to go out into the world and profess the truth like he has commanded each and every saint? How many of us are in Jonah's position where we look at, I mean, I stay in America, and we look at all around us, the wickedness, the evilness, all of the things that are going on in this world, the abominations, um, and, and we think that people are just so far gone and so lost and so deep in their sin that they're unredeemable. Amen? That, that, that we think that they're unredeemable. So we're like, we, we have this mentality. What's the point? Why, why am I going to preach to them? They don't care. They're not going to listen. All they're going to do is make fun of me. All they're going to say is that I'm crazy. All they're going to say is, oh, the Bible's an old archaic book full of fairy tales and you put your trust in it because it controls people. You know how, how it is? You adopt that mindset and you, you already condemn them. You've already passed judgment on them saying they can't be redeemed. 
That's what Jonah tried to do, which is why when God originally told him to go to Nineveh, he tried to go to Tarshish. He got on a ship trying to go the other way. But God said, uh-uh, you are going to do what I have commanded you to do. Let's not get in a position, folks, to where God is expecting us to do something and we try to do the opposite and he ends up throwing us in the belly of a whale. Not not literal well, but uh, let's just say the Lord will put you in a very dire situation that will force you to be obedient. And that's basically what happened to Jonah. He got forced into being obedient. And the Lord doesn't want to force you to do anything. But if you have a calling on your life, you need to fulfill that calling. You need to get out there. You need to preach the truth. You need to preach the gospel. You need to help these individuals, folks. We need to help these people. We're living in a very dire time. We're living in a, in a in a time period where people think it's hopeless right now. And a lot of people are on the fence like Jonah. Jonah, I don't want to go to Nineveh. Those people are, are evil. God, they hate you over there. They hate goodness. They worship false gods. They worship Baal. They are into wickedness. Why would I want to go to Nineveh? Really, there's, there are really some saints out there who feel like that about the world. But I'm going to read the end of chapter 4. And I'm going to close this video out. Okay? Because it puts things in perspective. Okay? And it says here, let's see. I'm going to go to verse 7. But as the morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm. And it, and it so damaged the plant that it wandered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared the venomous east wind and the sun beat Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He then wished death for himself and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, is it right for me to be angry even to death? But God said, you have had pity on a plant for which you have not labored, nor made grow, which came into the night and perished in the night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between right hand and their left hand and much livestock. And that's how the book of Jonah ends. He's telling Jonah, do you think that I should not have mercy on these people of Nineveh who don't know better, who are blind, who have scales on their eyes, who are deceived by false doctrines, fables, do you think that I don't have mercy on them? Do you think that I don't want to see them saved? Really? In the book of Ezekiel, it says, God wishes for no man to perish. He doesn't get any delight out of anybody going to hell. He wants everybody to have an opportunity to come to redemption. He wants everybody to have an opportunity, but he needs us. He needs us to get on the battlefield and to preach. He needs us to get on the battlefield and to speak the truth. He needs us to get on the battlefield and to do the work of the kingdom. You don't want anybody to go to hell. Nobody. And he feels the same way about this current world. He doesn't want to see people perish. He wants to see people get saved. He wants to see people come to Jesus. He wants to see people inherit eternal life. Let's not pass judgment on people. I know, I know, saints, that this world is wicked. I know 
that these people appear to be irredeemable. These people appear to not be salvageable. These people appear to be damned. These people appear to be not savable. But let me tell you something. Just like every one of you saints who came to Jesus Christ, you were saved from your sins. I was saved from my sins. There was a point in time I didn't always walk with the Lord. There was a point in time I would not pick this up. There was a point in time I didn't listen to the voice of God. And somebody out there is in that same position. So let's never pass judgment on people like Jonah tried to do with the people of Nineveh. Because somewhere in Nineveh, there is people who needed to be saved, who were going to hear. Not everybody's going to receive the gospel. But if you give it to them, they'll think about it. And some people may come back to it. We plant the seeds, let God water it. And if they blossom, they will. If they don't, they won't. All the seeds that we plant in the garden are not going to bloom. Amen? But we are the farmers. Let us let us at least get in the field, in the, in the vineyard, and, and, and we harvest souls for Christ. You can't do anything sitting on your behind, keeping the truth to yourself. You need to get this out. We need to get this out. We're not going to treat the world like Nineveh. We can't. And then let them, let them make fun of us. Let them say whatever. And for you people out there who are scared of people making fun of you and you're scared of people judging you and you're scared of people pointing fingers at you, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about how those Roman soldiers and those Pharisees treated Jesus Christ. I want you to think about all of the people pointing fingers at him as he walked you know, to, to with the cross on his back. I want you to think about all of those people spitting on him. I want you to think about all of those people saying that he was devil possessed. I want you to think about all of those people who, who looked at him in his nakedness hanging on the cross. I want you to think about those soldiers who laughed at him and they gambled for his clothes. I want you to think about those soldiers who beat him to death with the chains and the whips. I want you to think about those soldiers that put that crown of thorns on his head. The Bible says that no man shall be greater than his master. And if the world hated him, they will hate us too. If you're going to follow Jesus, you better be ready to fight. Amen? Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Don't be Jonah. Be obedient the first time. Don't let God have to take you through the fire. Let's start being obedient. Listen for that still small voice. He's still speaking. He's still speaking. God bless you all. Subscribe to the channel. Be sure to give it a like. See you guys in the next one.